I'm doing it because it gets me stress free. It gets out all my bullshit. Like I think of some of my best ideas when I'm working out, when I got those positive emotions going and make an episode on this, or I should do this with my business. It's self care for me. It's me time. That's one of my best practices. Sometimes I'll just show up like, Hey, I'm not trying to max out today. Like I'm just going to put myself through a good workout. You know? Yeah. I feel good after your workout and okay. Now what do we want to do from here? All right, I'm here with my main man, JJ Velasquez. He's a men's fat loss coach and fitness business coach. JJ, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, Joe, what's going on, man? Happy to be here. Super excited to have you, man. You know, uh, we've been connected for many, many years. I've been following your work. And, you know, even when we were talking offline, I'm like, you're not just some fat loss coach. Like, that's an understatement. Like, people think, oh, just, yeah, you see how people lose weight. It's what I see what you do. You do way more than that. And now you've even expanded into the business life because you've gotten so much success from the business and entrepreneur side. So it's really cool to see your growth and what you've been able to accomplish in the last man, four years or so, or whatever it's been. Um, but dude, before we jump into all that and what's, you know, and now all this great success that you're, you're, you're seeing, it wasn't always that way. So kind of tell people like what got you started in this? Cause you have a really eclectic background. You weren't like a Fit law, uh, fitness fat, fat loss coach. You were doing like modeling or like some yeah. kind of, I saw you on TV show. So talk about that. Yeah, man. I mean, I came a long way obviously, but um, yeah, just about four years ago, I was at a position where I needed to do something else with my life because I had tried photography. I tried network marketing, all this stuff. The bottom line was I, I knew I wanted to work for myself. I was tired of working for someone else, you know, letting them control my hours and everything. I wanted to work for me, be my own boss control my own income, more importantly, control my own fate and, you know, what I wanted to achieve in my life. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I had a background of fitness. I mean, I've been lifting weights and everything since high school. Um, but I got into personal training when I was super young, like in my early twenties and I was at the gym and it just back then, very little experience, didn't know how to sell market or anything. So didn't have much success with it back then. Like I said, I was doing EMT as well at that time, but that's what really got me passionate about helping people because I saw what would happen later on in life to people that didn't take care of themselves, people with diabetes that lost limbs, you know, just overweight people in wheelchairs, like the worst case scenarios. And it just made me realize like, man, I need to do something to help people to make sure not only, you know, my family and the people I care about never go down that path. So um, I always always be researching fitness and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, I was, um, I branched into other stuff as well, just because I wanted to be my own boss, but none of that really panned out like I wanted to, you know, and then especially, um, I actually was at one of the worst points of my life going through a breakup. Um, just was like, man, something needs to change. I don't know what. So I ended up visiting one of my buddies. He owns, um, the self-made gyms and he's like, man, why don't you get into personal training? And I was just like, it kind of hit me again. He's I'm like, yeah, man, I've been weight lifting weights for all these years. Why don't I do this again? So I started personal training again, you know, I went through all the courses and everything and got fired up about it and actually enjoyed it now. But then of course the big shutdown happened, COVID happened. And I was like, man, now what I go back to a nine to five or I find a way to make this work with going online. So that's what I was determined to do. I, I looked up, you know, hired coaches, mentors, stuff, went all in on becoming, you know, an online coach and learning to, um, how I could do it online. And, and, and in fact, I found out, wow, I can help, you know, people all over the USA now. And they got even better results than me doing in person, because I was able to help with, you know, nutrition, uh, coaching, accountability, a lot more. So that's what's uh, taken me. So I, I had some really good success with it. Um, and of course, I developed the skill sets, the, the sales, the marketing, you know, the personal branding myself, um, and just put a lot of effort into, um, you know, growing my online coaching business. And, uh, you know, fast forward to today, I've been doing it for the last few years, and now um, really successful at it. And then yeah, now I'm t teaching new, new fitness coaches how to do the same as well. Yeah, it's really neat. I think it, like that seems to, like be the evolution of just, you know, you've helped you've helped one niche so well in the men's community and, and getting them to lose weight. And that's something you're still passionate and still doing. And then you realize, but man, if I can help other men become successful coaches like me, I can tap into a, an entire new branch of people and help even more people that way. And I just love seeing kind of like your growth and, and what you've been able to achieve in such a short amount of time too. So it's really, it's really, really neat. And that, and not only that, man, but I, it's because I, you know, I, I'm passionate about what I struggled with because number one, I struggled with my weight and everything too, and not being happy with my body. So that's what another reason that got me into the fitness. But I also struggled with being very broke living, you know, below paycheck to paycheck, having to take payday advances out for money and just being very broke. So now that my online business is really successful, I, I, I want to help those people that maybe need help with, 
you know, yeah, growing their income and growing their finances and stuff. So that's what really got me into passionate about helping people grow their income and their online coaching business as well. Yeah, it's really, really neat. Talk to me about uh, just weight loss. You know, I was in the weight loss space for a while, but when, you know, when you see men that are coming to you or, or just, I mean, men in general, like, what do you think is, what is this epidemic? We have a huge crisis of obesity right now. You know that. I mean, it, the numbers are staggering right now. One right. of the last stats I saw is that only 6.8% of the United States population is metabolically healthy. I mean, that's a freaking travesty, dude. So in your opinion, from being in this industry so long, like, what's the biggest problem? Why are we seeing this? Well, I mean, of course, you see all the convenience food and all that stuff out there, too. But I'm a big believer in it's in who you surround yourself with. Yeah, if you look around and you see 90 percent of the people that are overweight, unhealthy, and lots of the times these people, their families the same way. You know, they don't they're not surrounding themselves with people that are fit like me personally. I most of my friends, you know, all that stuff like they're all fit because that's who we vibe with and stuff like that. So I, I'm a big believer. You're, you're a product of your environment. So if you want to start being more fit, of course, surrounding yourself with those people as well. But yeah, of course it's so easy to just, you know, not because like I said, I've seen what can happen later on in life. So there's, there's a really big passion and a lot of people, maybe they don't know, or they don't think that they have to work out or it's going to be hard or, you know, they don't see the value in it. And that's what I really try to come across in my content is stuff that like, there's a lot more to it than just looking and filling the part. Um, you know, of course, just the, 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 we've talked about this before, the feeling we get after we work out and there's just so much other benefits than just, you know, the look and, and health and stuff too. So I just think it's just making that awareness to people and just getting them, showing them the positive effects that can really happen with, you know, being fit. I don't know. I, I just don't get why you would not want to be looking and feeling your best all the time, how you wake up feeling tired, sluggish, low energy, you know, your kids are watching you. Like I just, you know, so I, I just... There's lots of reasons behind it. And sometimes it's just, you know, it's the awareness. And I hate to see people wait till something happens and then they start working on their fitness. So sometimes it's just about, you know, really um, opening the awareness to them on, hey, you should start this now, you know? When when you were in your dark place and and, I, and I, you're very you're very open about this and yeah. you're, when you were, uh, I don't even know if you were over, to me, you weren't overweight. You were just kind of pudgy and just, you just look sloppy. You were just inflamed yeah. basically, yeah. right? And um, you had a breakup. I mean, you, you didn't, you know, you didn't have the girl of your dreams, which you have now. But when when you look back at that in those dark places, what was it for you that you felt like, why were you in that dark place? What was your limiting beliefs? What was keeping you back from being who you are now? I mean, I think I was just stuck in lots of areas. Like I, I was working, number, number one, I was working a job I, you know, didn't like. I would sleep in, you know, no goals, no ambition, just kind of stagnate in all areas. And I think that translates to your health and fitness. You know, when you don't value your life or yourself or whatever, yeah, you turn towards back then I struggled with, you know, alcohol and went through a lot of that and was just parting. And yeah, it sounds like, you know, just lots of reasons to take my mind off of my situation when realistically I just wasn't like, you know, men are driven by purpose. We always want to be accomplishing things and we want to doing more accomplishing goals. And back then I didn't have any of that, but it's because the, it was because who I was hanging out with the same people that wanted to go party every weekend. And we weren't talking about goals and where we want to be a year from now and income and stuff like the people that I'm surrounding myself with now. So I just think I didn't have that self love, you know, that, that, that value of just treating myself well. And then once I started focusing on myself and wanting to be better in all these areas, that's when life really changed in all these areas. So, okay, that's that's huge. And I see who you hang around now. You're going to masterminds all the time. You constantly are investing in yourself. Was that like the first step you took? Or would you say, if someone's out there and they're like, man, I'm in a dark place. I'm 25 pounds overweight, which is very typical right now. I, I got to make a change. Like, what do you see as like the first step now that you've done it, you've broken free. You talk about this idea of surrounding yourself. as like the that that phrase, like the five most you know common friends you hang around. Like that is, if your five friends are rich, you're probably rich. If your five friends are fit, you're probably also fit. So is that the first step you'd say, get around those kind of people or invest in yourself? What do you think is the first step most people should start doing? Definitely, man, because if you don't have any other way of thinking, if you have no one else showing you a different mindset, showing you a different way, you don't know any other way. So that's the first thing I, I, I see with these people. It's like, well, yeah, your friends, your family, maybe they're overweight too. Like they're keeping you comfortable where you're at. So you start, you have to start surrounding yourself with people that are more fit, that are more successful, that are at a different level than you because they have different habits. They have different mindsets. They have different disciplines and different stuff they do throughout the day that gets them different results. So when I was struggling at that point, the first thing I did is I had no clue where to start. So I actually just started 
YouTube. I woke up 5 a.m. one day and, hey, let me watch a motivational video just to get me pumped up something. So I searched motivational videos. Oh, you know, I felt good that day. So I did it again the next day and I did it again the next day. And there was times where like years straight just watching motivational videos. But what that opened my eyes to was these motivational speakers. I started following them on social media. I started listening to what they're saying. Now I know just about every one of them. But because they, 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 they change your mindset. They change your way of thinking. You start believing in yourself more. You start believing what's possible for you. You hear these stories of people that were very you know broken and unsuccessful and changed their lives completely. So it makes you believe that, well, damn, if I'm stuck, I can do the same thing. But I have to learn these mindsets, these habits, these disciplines, and just, you know, so that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. So I knew that was the case. And so I started, okay, I started getting motivated to want to do something. Then I needed a place to start. So that's when I started, you know, piecing together credit cards and putting any money I can to investing in myself to develop new skill sets to start surrounding myself in mentorships and masterminds. And you start surrounding yourself with people that are more successful or, you know, at that level. And then pretty soon you start to, you know, learn their mindsets and stuff too. Plus you're developing new skill sets, which helps you become better too. And then, yeah, same thing, even when it comes to fitness, if you don't know how to get in shape, you know, you need to find someone else that can get you in shape. You know, I always say like, you don't, you don't work on your own car. Most of the time you take it into a professional to have them fix it for you. So same thing with your fitness. You see all these people do the fad diets, all these quick fixes, and you wonder why they're still in the same position for years and years and years, because you're doing all this unsustainable stuff. You know, you need to find a way that's going to work around your lifestyle and stuff like that. And that's a lot of what I do with my fitness coaching as well. But you have to surround yourself with people that have, that are successful in the area that you want and just follow their roadmap. Love that. JJ, talk to me about uh, investing in yourself because you, do, you you hit on a couple a, a couple points and I get this a lot and I know you, I'm sure you do too. But JJ, I don't have enough money. But JJ, I don't have the ability because I can't afford you as a coach or I can't afford that mastermind that you're going to with Bedros and all. I can't afford that. What do you say to these people that tell you that? I used to not be able to either. But the reason I can now is because I did invest in myself, you know, and, and of course, you know, you can start off and there's different coaches at level, different levels. You know, there's when I first started, I think my my first coaching program was like four hundred dollars a month. And, you know, I was making I don't even know, but like two grand a month or something. And I was just I, I was putting it on a credit card like, hey, I'll pay it off eventually. But I had this mindset of I need to do something different because if I don't nothing's ever going to change. So I made that initial investment, you know, and then my first, then I remember my, my first eight week program, which uh, was like six K and I was like, damn, like I don't have that money, but I need to do something differently to make a change. And I didn't even tell like my fiance, like, you know, she was my girlfriend at the time, but because I knew that she would probably be like, no, don't do it. And I knew at the same time, I have to do something because I knew where, you know, I knew she's been with me through all the struggles and stuff, but I knew that I had to do something differently. And so I'm just, you know what, I'm going to trust me. I'm going to go all in on me because I believe that I will do whatever it takes to succeed. So I'm going to invest in myself and take a chance on me. And that's exactly what I did. I pieced together a credit card over, like had to make it like over four months and, you know, was barely making any money, but Hey, then that got me to, you know, one level and then, okay, great. Let me do a, a year long coaching program now. Okay, great. You know, and then recently I did the, you know, the 5k day with Bedros and it's just like, but it's different levels, different levels and different levels. And yeah, obviously you're not going to start off with the, the highest skill set, but that's how we can start improving, you know, is just taking that first level, that first level, and you have to make it happen. Like, hey, you, maybe you're not going to go out to eat for a couple of weeks, or maybe you're going to not buy those shoes or that shirt, or that stuff's not getting you ahead. What's going to get you ahead is investing in yourself. And I'll tell you what, man, like when it comes to like, you know, bills or, you know, even buying stuff for myself, like, all, like I don't even spend more than like $20 for a shirt. Like I'm very cheap when it comes to myself and stuff. But when it comes to investing myself, like, okay, five in a day now, like I'll drop it just because I see the value in investing in myself. Now that I'm even making more of my business, I still put it back into myself and I'm still growing and stuff because there's always different levels and we have to start making a change somewhere. And I believe that's the best step we could ever make is yeah, investing in ourselves, man. It's so, it's so cool. It's so funny to hear you say that, uh, you and I, and you know, the serendipity of it is you and I met in, in that coaching program that we both went in and now I'm connected to great people like you, right? I would have never known that. I would have never thought about that, but like here, you and I are still friends, like, you know, three, four years later, it's crazy. Right. And like, and then that led us to other masterminds and led us to other people and let it, Oh, you're doing this in this industry. So it's so crazy when you take that leap of faith and I'm with you, man. I remember when I paid six K for that, I never spent that much in, in, in coaching in my life. And I was scared shitless to do something like that, but I did it anyways. Um, cause I, I felt like you, like I, I knew I needed to learn 
the process. And if I didn't, then I was going to be stuck in a place I didn't want to be. And that was way more painful than not doing anything at all. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out a way to do this, whether I got to put on multiple credit cards or whatever, I'm going to, damn it, I'm going to do it. And I'll tell you with this, man, too, people think about investing and they think about real estate stocks and all that stuff. Think about this, like that stuff can take years sometimes, you know, and we're going to put a couple hundred bucks a month in a, you know, in a 401k or in a, you know, in a stock and, you know, get, what is it? Seven, eight percent back a year. And it's like, I made that investment back in a couple of months and that's compounded over years and years and years. So it's like the best investment we can make in ourselves is in ourselves. you know, forget all the other stuff, like invest in yourself first, cause that's going to grow your income and change your life the quickest, I believe. Yeah. Very neat. There is a, an, a, another thing you were talking about is just kind of um, the different levels, which I really like. I think that can make it easy for people to think about. And it reminded me of this uh, famous MMA uh, UFC fighter from back in the day. I don't remember Frank Shamrock. Who was like a really, you know, world, yeah, world class guy back. No one could touch him. I don't even know how many times he was defeated, like maybe none. But he was saying he has this rule for how he would train, and it was called plus minus equal. And the idea is that I'm going to train with people that are better than me, plus I'm going to train with people that are less than me, because then I learn by beating them and getting them, you know, submitting them, and then equal. And then the more you start doing, and you see that a lot in jujitsu gyms, and it's that plus minus equal kind of uh, formula. And the more you can kind of surround yourself with people that, make you raise the bar, people that are equal to you so that you can be competitive and, you know, feel like you're competing and then people that are less so that you can tap them and then you learn by executing. So really, really neat. Just to, I like, I think people can really, you know, eat, chew on that and go, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I can, I can invest little bits. It doesn't need to be, you don't have to go to the JJ mastermind day one, but you know, you start getting there. Right. Well, and I'll tell you what, man, just like you said about that equation, like for the, my, the first one I ever went to, I sat in the back, was scared to ask questions, you know, didn't know where to start. But then next thing you know, I did another one, did another one. Now I'm in the front seats asking all these questions. And now pretty soon I go to these events and people are where I was three years ago asking me questions, you know? So, uh, you know, I've got to that level and now it's like, oh, I remember me asking those same questions. I remember me struggling with those same things, but it just shows the level that I've grown now. And now I'm giving, yeah, I'm giving back and to that person and stuff too. But yeah, you're right. There's different levels that we go through and it's just, uh, that's what's exciting about it. Yeah. Okay. Talk about, let's talk again about fat loss. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen you, you know, you're not helping guys just lose 25 pounds. I've seen you, you're helping guys lose 50, 60 pounds, like more than, more than just one. What's the secret sauce, dude? You know, I, I'm a big fan of sustainability. Um, you know, number one, like like I said, all the, especially if your goal is you want to lose a 50, 60 pounds, you're not going to get through doing a fat diet because what's going to happen is you're going to cut out all your carbs, you're going to starve yourself, you're going to do all this stuff, you'll lose a little bit of weight for a few weeks and you'll gain it back. So the first thing I te teach everybody is let's get away from all the fat diets. Let me show you how to eat the foods you like in the right amounts and just start exercising. You know, it, it sounds very simple, but it's just like, that's all it really takes. But we have to, we have to build something that you could be consistent with and stack those wins. Let me start you off with three days. So you start building a little bit more confidence in yourself because you've stayed consistent over three days. You'll see these guys that I want to get in shape. So I'm going to start off with six days a week, uh, seven days a week. I go twice a gym. Like, man, that's not sustainable. And you see them last a week or two and then they, they quit because they wake it, they make it way harder on themselves. So I'm a very big fan of just starting off very simple. Let's show you how to eat, like I said, how to eat the foods you'd like, and let's start, you know, start exercising. I'll start you off at your current level of fitness. As you're getting in better shape, keep making the adjustments. We could add more days. We can keep compounding from there. And that's what it's going to really take. If you will have a big goal of losing, yeah, 50, 60, 70 pounds, we need something sustainable that you can be, that you could do long-term. So that's what a lot of what I teach. And what happens is as people start to not only surround themselves with me and you know my mindset and stuff too and the belief that I put in themselves as well but when they have a clear structure and a roadmap of exactly what to do um, I'm giving them accountability making sure they're doing it and then as like I said as I have them weigh in every single week and as they as they see their body changing as they start to um, improve themselves hey they build more confidence now they can believe they can do this they see their body changing 10 20 30 pounds now they want to take it to the next level okay now one guy he's lost i think uh he's 68 pounds now and he he's not stopping until he gets abs you know and it's crazy because he was like you know 270 or something but he's loving the process and we talked about this um recently too he's building an identity 
He's seeing what's possible for him now. He was stuck doing all these fad diets. He was stuck, stuck, stuck. Now he's got a roadmap that he can follow and he's been successful with it. So why stop now? Let me keep doing this. Let me keep doing this. And, and now, yeah, like I said, he's the thinnest he's been in years, feeling great, looking great. But then he's like, hey, you know, abs. And then he's even like, hey, I want to get into fitness coaching. And it just shows, wow, like this is what can really happen when you execute you stay consistent when you start developing that identity start you know loving yourself taking care of yourself and do something that you can maintain long term and that's actually sustainable so that's what i teach and of course i work with lots of busy guys and stuff so my workouts aren't super long and stuff but it's like i talk about sustainability is the key because consistency over the long term is what's going to matter i don't care what you did in one week one month you know, I care what you've done over three months, six months, 12 months. And so if we can show you how to do something sustainable, you're going to be able to do it. And that's exactly what I've been able to do to get me in shape. And I practice what I preach. I teach my guys the same stuff because that's what has worked for me for years and years and years. And now it's helping lots of these guys do the same. I, I uh, it, it went, I, I lost you for a second. Don't worry. I'll have it edited though. Um, talk about that too, because, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I love what you're, what you're talking about because as a dad, as a busy dad, I'm, I think you and I are in very similar shoes. I have two kids. You just had a, a son who's what, about a year, two years old. Yeah. He's about a year and a half, year and a half. Yeah. And so, you know, we see that a lot in, in the men's world, you know, they might've been like, I love what you said, you know, you might've been a high school athlete, a collegiate, oh, but I did this and I did that. And then, but it's like, who cares? Like, what are you doing now? And what are you consistently doing to show up? And now it's even more important, man, because you got kids, you got a legacy and how you treat them now is going to be how they are affected in the future and the legacy that they're going to take generation after generation. So how do you ma like how do you think about that when in terms of managing it for the busy dads that you know I got a mortgage I got I'm working shift work like all the first responders I'm around I've got this I got a marriage I got all these things I got that are compounding on me and so how do you make that easy for these guys so that they can attain it you know, at first, I believe it's just about flipping that switch in their mindset because they don't see the value of this. And yeah, I got to worry about work and this, this, and this, but no, let's stop there. You have to take care of yourself first. You know, I hear that a lot. Oh, I'm, I'm busy with the kids. I'm always taking care of everybody else. Well, hey, we need to change that mindset and we need to realize that when we take care of ourselves first, we're going to be able to show up at our best for the people that need us at our best, our friends, our family, our coworkers, our kids, you know, all that stuff. So we have to just start um, learning, hey, I, I want to be that role model for my kid. I want to be able to throw the football and run with them and play and be active with them and play sports with them. And, and, and it's just, that's, and, and be around a long term, a long time for them and be healthy because if we don't take care of our fitness, that's what can really happen. So a lot of it is just understanding the value of a hey, being that role model, being that, you know, your kid's going to look up to you. Don't do, don't you want a healthy and fit kid? You know, that's someone that can be healthy. You don't want the overweight kid at school that's getting made fun of. Like, let's, let's show that example as a dad of what it can be. Like, I want you to show your kid you can still work a busy lifestyle, still take care of the family and still work on your fitness because that's all things we should do. And I know very, lots of very successful people, way busier than you, have a lot more going on you and they're still working on their fitness. Why? because they made it a priority and they know the value in it. And so we just have to change that mindset and realize that like, this is just as important because when you look your best, when you feel your best, when you're confident, that's going to rub off on your kids. You know, they're going to, I like, I got lots of people that like their kids want to work out with them. Now their kids want to be active. You don't want to be that guy that can't fit in into the roller coaster because you're too big. You can't play with your kids because you're out of breath. You're on the sidelines. You got your shirt on at the beach. Like that's not a good example. And that's not the example we should be showing for our kids. I'm always a believer in like, let's, let's show our kids the best life. Let's show them that confidence, you know, what it's like to be healthy, fit and, and love ourselves because it's going to relate to that way. So it's just about changing that mindset and just getting you to think about it a lot differently and knowing the value in it. And then you'll find the time, you know, or sorry, you'll never find the time. You'll actually make the time. I don't care if it's 30 minutes. That's all we need. You know, a couple a few days a week, like that's all it takes. So it's, it's never about, you don't have time. It's just, you don't see the value in it. And once you do, you'll make the time for it. Yeah, really key, really key, man. Um, what do you say though when I'm sure there's a lot of guys that start your program or even before you just you see them, maybe they follow you and stuff, and they've got all these excuses. <laughs> and so, you know, but I can't do this and I can't do that. How does JJ, how do you like to steal their excuses from them and be like, 
all I hear is excuses. I'm going to steal those for you because I'm just as busy and busier. Well, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's bullshit. Number one, you know, like, and the re the reason that they are making excuses is because they feel, they probably feel guilty that they haven't been taking care of themselves, but realistically, like those are self-limiting beliefs, all that stuff that I, and I've heard it. I've heard everything. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm busy. I'm tired. I got this, this is, this is going on. Well, guess what? There's lots of people in the same situation that are. So it's just about like, yeah, calling them on their bullshit. Like, Hey, you can tell your wife that you can tell your family, you can tell your coworkers that, but I don't see that. I don't, I don't believe your bullshit because I know what you can, I know. Cause I've seen it done with guys that are busier than you. I've seen it done, but so I just needed to get you to, to, to realize that you are making excuses that I'm not, that I'm not going to accept that because I know that you need to make a change and you know, you need to make a change. So we need to start getting you thinking about where you want to be in the future and, and what's possible for you and why you want to get there. That's one of the first things that I always ask them. If we have a strong why and we know why we're doing this, we're going to find a way to make it happen. Just like when I was struggling, broke and broken, everything, I knew I had to make it a change. So it's like same thing when it comes to their fitness, like you're, you're on this call with me or you're here for a reason. You know you want to make a change. You can't do it yourself. So we have to give you a different mindset, different structure. But lots of times I see just having structure helps lots of people too, because sometimes when we don't know where to start, it's easier to do nothing. So I see lots of guys, oh, I'll start tomorrow. I'm going to start in the Monday, the new year, but it's because they don't know where to start. So if I tell you, Hey, these workouts, these are the workouts you're going to do. They only take, you know, 30 minutes. Can we do them three days a week? Every guy I've said that to you, after I've asked them, why is this important to you? What happens if nothing changes and realize that how bad their situation, they all say, oh yeah, I can commit to that. So, oh, suddenly now you, you haven't done anything for two years, three years, and suddenly now you can get it done. What changed? Well, now you have a roadmap to follow. Now you have someone else besides your friends, your family, whatever, holding you accountable, pushing you and checking in with you to make sure you actually, you know, get your shit done so we can accomplish the goal. Like you're here for a reason and I want to show you what's possible for you because I've seen what can happen when these guys change their lives. Like one, one guy who's lost 50 pounds says, I feel like a real dad now. He wasn't able to play soccer. He wasn't able to jump on the trampoline. He wasn't able to do anything with his kids. He was on the sidelines. Now he was like, man, my, my kid hugged me. She's, she, she said, you're skinnier. He, he was able to sprint with them, able to play on the trampoline. He feels like a real dad now. So I know what's possible for you on the other side when you cut the excuses, when you cut your bullshit, and when you accomplish the goal. So that's what I want for you. So that's what I want to bring out for you. So I'm going to dig into your pain, but then I'm also going to show you how to get there, and I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you and sustainable so we can get there and keep pushing you if I see you missing workouts so you can do what it needs so you can do what you need to do to accomplish the goal because I know your life's going to change if you stick to this plan and I know you want it and it's going to be worth it for you so it's just about you know conveying all this in my message and in, in the way I talk to them and pretty soon hey you see what happens and it's like wow Jay you changed my life dude that's crazy I love that I, I, I feel like a real dad now that's so powerful wow um, and I love what you said too about um, I'm I'm reminding them of the reason that they're here. There's a reason you're here, and I just got to remind you that. And I lo I love that. That's really cool. How how long is your uh, initial program that you run for men to just get them to that sweet spot of weight? And then I'm sure you have like also some kind of uh, back end program if they want to yeah. continue with you. What what is that typically like? So I always start it? I always start with the 90 day program because number one, like especially I don't care where you are right now, like we have to develop new habits, new disciplines. Um, you're going to make progress, but then, yeah, I'm going to need to make adjustments to the workout. So you keep making progress and stuff. So I always want to, I don't care if your goal is 10 pounds, you know, 50 pounds. I always start with 90 days because yeah, let's, we need to start developing these stuff. We need to build some, some confidence. We need to get you stacking those wins and yeah, it makes, it makes some good progress in 90 days, you know, f f a month or so, it's just not enough time to even see a really good transformation. Um, so 90 days is what I always start with, but then, yeah, you know, you will have guys that lose 20, 25, 30 pounds, whatever it is. And now they want to lose another 20, 30 pounds, or now they want to, you know, get that six pack, or maybe now they're doing lean and now they want to just know how to maintain it or, um, you know, how to build more muscle and stuff like that. So yeah, then we, then maybe I'll do like a six month program with them and yeah, let's show you how to lose that rest of the weight that you want and actually how to maintain this long term. You know, or yeah, like now you now you're lean, you have your know, abs, now you want to build more muscle. Okay, well now we can focus on that as well. So um, you know, I'm I yeah, I don't just, you know, cut them off after, you know, 90 days, but that's what I see and gets the best results for people because that's an amount of time to make a really good transformation. Um, so that's what I've been doing. 
Yeah, and I think I think ninety days is a really nice sweet spot. I've seen a lot of guys. Uh, the average, you know, guy that's overweight, got, he's got at least about twenty five pounds to lose, and and in ninety days you can do that pretty successfully. So that that's I think is a really nice sweet spot. And then if you've got further goals, you can you can aspirations, you can continue. And, and, and I think a big aspect of what you do too, is just the community, right? Having that community of other men supporting other men. And that's a big aspect of it too. And so if, I think men can get galvanized. And I know from my own experience from doing men's work and just, you know, share, being vulnerable and, and sharing some, what's go, the hardships that's going on, that can be very helpful in a men's only group I found. Yeah. When you, like you said, when you surround yourself with people with like a different mindset, like if someone tries to tell me like, Oh, I got my kids and said, well, guess what? So do I like that, that excuse doesn't work on me. So it's like when someone just cuts the bullshit and shows you like, you can do this too. But yeah, like I said, it's about having someone else believe in you, pull you up, show you a different way, different mindset, show you different habits and stuff. And that's what it really takes to be successful because yeah, like I say, your friends, your family, they might not be doing that for you. So you need to surround yourself with someone else that is, or that can show you the way. And that's the value of plugging into these communities or people like you, but yeah, people love the community aspect because Hey, I'm 50 pounds overweight, just like this guy. And you know, we're all working hard. We're all after the same goal. We're all working on our fitness. And I tell my guys too. Yeah. Hey, plug into this community here because yeah, like I said, maybe your friends, your family, they're doing different stuff. They're not worried. They're not working on these goals. Everyone in here is we're all doing the same thing. We're, you know, we're doing these workouts. We're monitoring our nutrition and stuff. So when you plug in here, like it's going to motivate you and keep you going. Yeah. One of the things I really love about you is that you're everything you're talking about is total in alignment with me. Like I think we're both very upbeat, positive guys, always optimistic. The glass is always half full in, in our world. But I'm curious, what does JJ do on a down day when you're having a bad day? How do you, how do you rebound from that? Exactly like we just talked about. I go get a damn good workout in. You know that that's that's the best thing because yeah, I mean, there's days when it's like oh, like and that's just, and and like we talked about earlier, I don't do it for I'm not trying to hit a number on the scale. I'm not trying to do it for you know a a, a bodybuilding show or a, a photo shoot. I'm doing it because it gets me stress free. It gets out all my bullshit. Like I think of some of my best ideas when I'm working out. When I got those positive emotions going, you know, I'll be think I'll be I'll be taking notes and stuff. You know, like like oh, I'm gonna do my podcast. Uh, I, I'm going to make an episode on this, or I should do this with my business because it just gets you to, you know, it, and it's basically, it's self-care for me. It's me time, you know? So that's, you know, that's one of my best practices. Sometimes I'll just show up like, Hey, I'm not trying to max out today. Like I'm just going to put myself through a good workout. I'm going to go, you know, kick my ass and I'm going to feel great afterwards. And then that's it happened so many times when, yeah, it's been a down day. Maybe I didn't get that much sleep because the baby, you know, maybe I'm, you know, had a slump or whatever it was like, Hey, I'm going to go get a workout and I feel rejuvenated afterwards. I feel energized. I feel, um, you know, so that's what I do just to, to plug through and, you know, yeah, I feel good after a workout and okay, now what do we want to do from here? Now I get back to working or whatever else I got to do, but I, I'm in a different mindset now because I, you know, raise my energy, uh, raise yeah, my so, frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, working out is actually the solution. If you're like, just, man, my energy sucks. Uh, I don't feel, uh, 30 clients just left me. I have no money or you're just having a bad day. Working out, it would be like the solution for you of like, all right, it's time to like, let's get this back on track. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, when we, when we have confidence, when we, if something, you know, if we take care of ourselves, we spend that time on ourselves, we, we kind of refresh, we can recuperate and yeah, you just, you just feel really good after a workout, you know? So I think that's one of the best things we can do is just hey, focus. Sometimes we can't control everything else going on, but what we can control is ourselves. I can go, you know, do workout. I can do this stuff and I can feel great and I'll worry. And I, and then the number one, I believe in myself. So no matter what else is going on, I know that I'm going to figure it out because Hey, I've struggled. I've been there and I, I figured it out so far. So if something does happen, I'm going to figure out a new way to get it done. Um, and maybe I'll invest in another coach or mastermind or I'll start doing some different strategies, but I just have a belief that I'm going to keep on figuring it out. So yeah, sometimes if I need a, a little refresh, I'll go knock out that workout and Hey, let's get right back to it. You know, we don't quit. We don't, if we never quit, we never fail. So, you know, we just keep, keep on pushing and keep on finding a way. That's so good because again, most people, that would be the opposite of what they would do, right? Like oh, I'm having a down day. I'm not going to work out. You, it's actually the antithesis of what most people yeah. would do. And you actually go do it anyways, because you know, that's the solution. I love let that. Me, let me, let me think about this. Yeah. What do most people do when they're having a down day? Oh, let me go pick up a beer. Let me go turn to the bottle. Let me go, you know, watch porn or let me do some of this other stuff. This is escape. And it's like, is that really helping you? No, it's not. 
what I found that's going to be best. And, and I've worked with guys who have, I've, I've been one of those personally who've struggled with alcohol and guys that have, you know, got off alcohol. It's because a lot of it's habits, you know, you turn towards these habits. I'm used to just after a long day sitting on the couch and having my beer or having these foods. Lots of people use food as a, you know, emotion and to try to make themselves feel better. But you know what even works even the best is actually getting a good workout and taking care of yourself because that's what like an upper, you know, this alcohol and stuff, that's all a depressant. It's never going to really help you in your situation better because what happens if you, you know, maybe you'll wake up with a headache or you feel sluggish or you, you almost feel guilty like that th that's what you're doing. But when you feel good after your workout, like, hey, even though I was tired, even though I wasn't motivated, even though I felt like crap, I got a workout done. I took care of myself and you're going to feel good afterwards. So I believe that's you know, better than anything that we can be going through. And one of the, one of the things I always say for people, if we are going through like a depression or something like that, like I said, it's because you're not doing anything to progress in life or you're not doing anything that's, that's giving you value or that's exciting you. So when you have a workout or when you have a goal you're working on with your fitness, like that's one of the, it's free, you know, that's one of the first places you can get started. You can knock out some push-ups, burpees, jumping jacks, run on, go on a run, whatever it is. And, you know, you could instantly change your mindset and change your state just by doing that. Yeah, so cool. What you know, something you said that really also hits on that point, and it reminded me. I interviewed this uh, top fitness trainer in the LA area who works with like celebrities and all these like you know affluent people and some of the people we've seen in movies. And I said, well, look, at, what's the number one thing you see in like these celebrities or even like your top clients? And he said, kind of what you said. He said the big difference, Joel, is the follow through. He said. Even when there's that down day, they follow through. They still show up. And he said, that's the key because the days you don't want to do it and you still follow through, mentally you're telling yourself like, basically like, I'm a badass mother. You know what? Like nobody can wreck me because even on my dad, even if it's not a great workout, you still showed up. And so I think it goes to your point. I really like that, man. The follow through. I tell, I tell my clients, those are the days that count the most. Because if you can show up even on the hard days when you're tired, when you're stressed out, you don't feel like it, the easy days are a breeze. So I want you to show up on those days when you, and I, I, I've had guys literally, Jay, man, I don't feel like working out today. Hey, go do what you can. Go do your best. I don't care if you set any personal best. I don't care how heavy you lift. I just want you to go give it your best effort. Do what you can with the time that you got because you're going to feel great afterwards. And you showed up on this hard day. So you're building something mentally inside you that shows yourself that, hey, I show up even on the hard days, I show up and do hard shits, even when I don't feel like it. So when we have other hard stuff happen in our lives, no problem. I'm used to showing up. I'm ready for it. I got this. Let's push through it. Just like the workout. Yeah. So good. Talk to me about exciting projects and some new things that you're working on. Well, yeah, man. Um, obviously, yeah. Like I said, the business coaching has been about two or three months. Um, you know, I've been, I'm really passionate about, you know, helping people. So I'm loving helping people make more money as well. You know, plus there's so much people that need help with their fitness all over the, you know, the world, the USA and stuff. So the more people we can help, the more lives we can change. So I've been, of course, doing the business stuff, but man, I have, you know, big goals. I want to be on stage. I want to do my own masterminds. I want to hold my own events and stuff like that just to, you know, change other people's lives like the people that have changed my lives, these mentors, these, these, these masterminds, these coaches, all this stuff that I've done to help me. I want to be at that point and, you know, and be able to help more people as well. Like I said, host my own events. You know, I got my own podcast now, going now too, just, you know, on all social media platforms. So just trying to get more eyes, more eyes, more attention on me so I could help more people as well, whether it's their fitness, their business, you know, making more money, the mindset, the self-development, just becoming a better man overall. That's my whole goal is because, Hey, I've been there broke, you know, struggling in so many areas and I've you know overcame that and like I said this is just to me this is just the beginning I can't imagine where I'm going to be from five years because I, five years from now because I keep have I, ha I keep wanting to go to the next level so that's that's kind of my you know my my next moves is hey let's let's keep expanding let's you know get more eyes on me let's start doing my own events masterminds um things like that so I can provide you know more impact to the people that need it as well yeah it's really exciting man it's really exciting to see what, what you're up to and what you got uh in the future Really quick, because I want to wrap things up in a little bit, but before I do, what what about now, let's just turn it to the fitness coach side that people that you're helping. What do you see is, and because I have a lot of coaches that listen to this show, whether they're fitness coaches or health coaches, but in general, like what are you seeing in the fitness community or the coaching community, some of the biggest mistakes that these coaches are making and like you, like, you know, you even thought like, I don't know if you can go virtual and be successful. Yeah. So what are, what are these coaches? Like, there's a lot of coaches out there, but why are they not successful? Did that come through, JJ? Uh, 
the, I think the, 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 I think that you lost the last part. So what are some of the big, the changes that I'm, I'm seeing, or what are the some things I'm struggling I'll, with? I'll, I'll, I'll say the question over again. Okay. So, you know, you've got a lot of fitness coaches and a lot of health coaches out there. They want to do what you've done. And actually a lot of them listen to my show. And since you're in that arena now and you're helping a lot of these coaches scale and build businesses, what do you see a lot of them? What are the mistakes they're making that before working with you, they're making 200 bucks a month and now boom, like what, what was getting in their way? Well, there's quite a few things. Number one, obviously. Yeah. And, um, well, first off, number one, people don't even know the possibilities of online coaching. I've been, you know, in person and stuff too, and it's just hard to scale in-person business, you're trading time for money, you're capped out on the amount of people you can help and you know the amount of um, income you can make because you're trading time for money. But when it comes time to mistakes too, I see lots of people, they're really good at coaching. Yeah, you might be the best trainer in the world, nutrition, you know, you have all these certs and all that stuff, but if you don't know how to market, if you don't know how to sell, if you don't know how to build your brand, like that's where you need to focus on because hey, like I said in the beginning too, I didn't know how to sell. I've never done sales before. I've never done a sales call. I don't know how to market. I don't know how to do lots of these stuff. So that's where I had to start off first. So lots of the times we they have to just spend some time. Hey, no one really cares about how many certs you got. Like they just want the result. So like I, you know, just talking to that that person that on, on their level. Hey, I know they don't need to care. They don't care about the biometrics and you know, the, the hypertrophy and all that stuff. They just want to know how to accomplish the goal and making it simple. So we need to dumb it down, talk to our ideal client, but that's, like I said, talk to our ideal client. Lots of people don't even know who they're helping. You're helping men do this. You're helping uh, females do this, gain weight, lose weight. You're all over the place. You want to become a specialist in exactly what you do. Like I help men lose, lose weight, lose fat. I know how to build muscle, gain size, all this stuff, but I'm a specialist in exactly what I do. So all my clients, they've seen all my transformations. I share all my transformations, all my success stories of men that have lost weight. So if, if a man comes to me, they feel confident in my service and in me because number one, they've seen my results. That's a lot of thing I, I see people too. We have, you could be the greatest coach. I talked to a coach yesterday. He's got like 15 years of experience, trained celebrities and stuff too. And I have no idea that you can even help people because I've never even seen any of your transformations. We have to be sharing our work, guys. Like share your share your testimonial or share your success stories. Yeah, it might not get no love on Instagram or whatever, but you know what it's going to get? is DMs. You know what it's going to get is people that want to work with you. So I, I, you look at my page and I got client testimonials, transformations, video testimonials, all that stuff. So you have to start showing your work. You have to develop an ideal client avatar. Who is it that you help? You know, what is the goal that you're helping them achieve? And then start making content to that person, share valuable content. What is that person going through? Their pain points. I know for me, like, hey, man, they're, you know, they want to walk their kids down the aisle. They want to be that role model. They want to be healthy long-term. I know lots of my pain points for my client because I talked to, you know, hundred thousands of these men. And so I know exactly what they're going through. So it's like, you have to first, you have to develop your client avatar. Who is it that you're going to help? What's the goal? And then you can start making content talking to their pain points, talking to exactly what they need and the solution that, that you can provide for them and just start giving tips, sharing value so you can increase your following. But then, yeah, now you need to know, you know, lead generation and how to bring these people in, how to, you know, get them on a call or whatever, and then sell them into your program. You know, it's very different from in-person training where they're trading, oh, I'm going to sell you per session. Like, no, we're selling the outcome here. I'm selling you a 90 day, you know, fat loss program where you're going to lose 20, 20. So we, it's a little different. Now we're selling them the outcome and stuff too. So it's just about, you know, learning, learning that aspect of it, learning the sales, the marketing and what to do when it comes to online. But I'm going to tell you what, man, it, it's, it's worth it. And I'll tell everybody that, you know, Hey, if you're an in-person trainer now, go online, you're going to help more people. Like I see lots of people too. You're making okay money, five, six K, maybe whatever it is, but you're working 60 hours a week, you know, 70 hours a week. And I've been there before. You'd have to go to the gym in the morning and then back in the evening and stuff. You got no time for you, your family, you know, you don't, you don't, you're just capped out on time. And it's like, I know that as a man and me, I, I want to spend time with my family. I want to be able to go on a vacation when I want. I want to be able to have great income to support my family and to do nice things. So it's like, if you're trapped for time, if you're trapped for income, like, hey, go online. Maybe it's going to be a side hustle for now. But if you can, I always suggest going online because, yeah, you can help a lot more people all over the USA. Um, and then, yeah, you could just provide more of an impact as well, provide more income for you, more time off. So, uh, you know, I've, like I said, I've been there before and that's exactly what I've done. I had to learn all this stuff, but I'm going to tell you, it's always worth it, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many, there's so many things that you have to do. Uh, at first you're like, yeah, I just got to do this. But as you can see, it's, it goes from lead gen to branding to sales. There's a, it's almost like speaking a different language. And, um, I'll, I'll be honest. I had to hire a coach. You, you work with coach. You had to hire coaches. 
I would not be where I am today if I didn't hire coaches who walk me through that blueprint, that plan, because it's really speaking a new language. And I think a lot of coaches, they don't know how to speak that language. So well, and um, let me talk, let me talk on that. Like when you think about like, okay, you are your, you're an entrepreneur. Like you want to start your own business. Now you're not having to spend hundreds of thousand dollars on a, on a facility and all that stuff. You're talking maybe a couple hundred bucks to, to, to build a business online, but yeah, invest in, invest a couple hundred bucks, a couple of thousand, whatever into the skills that you need. Cause this can last you a lifetime. This could be your retirement plan. This could last you for years and years and years. You can make great money. So invest in yourself, invest in it. Like it is a business. Oh, I don't want to spend any money into, you know, ads or into coaching or well, how do you expect to grow a business? If you started a business, you know, an ice cream shop or whatever it was like, you'd have to start, you'd have to market it, right? You'd have to, you know, get it out there. You'd probably have to invest a lot more in, a, in, in something like that. So with this, it's like, you just have to think about that same mindset. I'm going to invest in my business like a real business. I'm going to invest in skill sets and help and all this stuff, but you can grow it like a real business and make more than, you know, a doctor, you know, it's crazy. You know, it's really cool. I was just thinking about this, this idea of a language, because, um, you know, as I'm kind of transitioning from taking a break from the health coaching, I'm still going to do that, but I'm doing a, I have a new offer for the first responder father group that I really, I'm really inspired to, to launch. And I was just thinking what, to your point, because I've learned the language, I can now take that language, I can take that blueprint and I can apply it to any other business really. Like I now have the ability to speak, I, I know how to replicate it. Yes, there's new things that change, there's new funnels and there's new ideas, but in the for the, the basic foundation, I have that. And because I understand that now, I can go replicate that in multiple businesses, which is really cool. So that one 6K investment that you and I made many years ago, like it's just compounded because I can now do that and make, more, 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 right? So it's really, yeah, yeah it's a really valuable yeah, and, and, asset. And, now. and having, they say like sales is like one of the highest income skills you can ever have. If you can learn sell, you know, sales, how to sell yourself, how to sell your programs, how to sell whatever it is like, you know, and like you said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start doing masterminds and all, you know, all these stuff too, but I've developed sales and same thing when I go into my, one of my business coaching, I got to still sell. I got to still do a lot of these things, but I've built these skill sets. Yeah. So it's like you learn them once and they can last you, you know, a lifetime too. Like you, like you just said, man. Yeah. Really cool. Let's wrap things up. I want to let people know where to find you, but before I do, I've got some fi final round questions. You, you got some time. Let's go. All right. Um, I'm curious, man. You, what do you think, what are some choices or a choice that you made that you think made you who you are today? Man, you know, just that, that I would say that first, that first investment, man, you know, cause I, you know, I, if I, if I would have never surrounded myself with new people, if I would have never jumped into that first community, that first mentorship, I'd still, I, I wouldn't I have no clue what to do. You know? And, and in fact, when I, when I first went to even Bedros' event, I came in, I was doing photography. I was doing network. I was all over the place. And he said, singularity of focus. And it's just about like realizing like, Hey, let me find a different roadmap. Let me find something. So I, I always attribute a lot of my success to investing in myself reading books, you know, learning and stuff like that. I wouldn't be nowhere near I am today if I wouldn't have done any of that. So self-development, self-development, you know, uh, I, one, of my, one of my biggest phrases is life gets better when you get better. So when you work on yourself, when you improve your skill sets and everything, everything else is in your life's going to improve as well. So we have to start there. Number one. Love that. You sp speaking of books, is there like a top one to three books? I'm a big reader. Do you have like a top one um, to three that impacted I, I never, you? And uh, you say, Go out and read these. Yeah. So the number one, uh, slight edge. That's, that's a great one because it talks about, you know, showing up consistently every single day, every single day. Another one is, um, what you say when you talk to yourself, you know, it's, it's that self-talk. If you're just negative and you don't believe in yourself and you're, I can't do this. This is too hard. You're going to quit. You, your mindset's going to get in the way. But if you start telling yourself positive things, Hey, you know, and, and that's what that book teaches you. It, Cause a lot of what the, a lot of what we talk to ourselves, we start to believe. So if we can tell myself, I got this. I'm going to figure it out. Like I was just mentioning a few minutes ago, like, Hey, no matter what happens, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find a way. That's the self-talk I have for myself. So it's like when you're constantly talking to yourself that way and uplifting yourself, like you're going to be able to get through anything in your life, you know? Um, and then of course, um, you know, the first book I ever read, Think and Grow Rich, you know, and it's kind of the same thing. It just challenges you. It, it, it just makes you think, think about different things a different way, you know, masterminds, like mentorships, you know, Oh, you know, 
the self, like all that stuff. And it's just like, so that's, that's the first book I started. It took me like three months to read. That was one of my first books I ever read. But Hey, after that, now I've read, I don't know, 50 or 60, whatever it is, but that was my first one. And then I started enjoying reading, um, started doing it with my coffee in the morning, developed a habit for it because I saw the value in it and it's became a routine. So those are three of my you know top books. I would say, man, I love that. I, some of them I've never heard of, so this is great. Um, talk to me about that rituals. I want to know, like, what does a high performer like you do? Do you have like a, a, a I don't know, rituals, gratitude, reading, yeah. coffee? Yeah, so, what do you do? Um, first, I'm going to start. I'm going to talk about what I did when I was struggling at my worst, because that's what's going to matter the most. Now I got a different routine, the baby and stuff. But when I was struggling, when I was at my worst, you know, and like I said, I had no idea how to read, any, or I mean, didn't have much experience reading. Couldn't, you know, so. You and they always say I got this from the uh, Atomic Habits book. You want to pair a habit that you like to do with the habit you need to do. I liked my coffee in the morning every single morning, so I'm gonna read ten pages every single day while I have my coffee. So um, the first morning, I always say work on yourself first before you go work for anyone else. So before I don't care if you're working nine to five, whatever it is right now, wake up earlier if you have to, just like I did back in the day watching the motivational videos. You know, ten to fifteen minutes a day. If we could develop you know, 30 minutes for yourself every single morning where you're just maybe watching a motivational video, maybe where you're um, reading a book every single day compounded over three months, six months, a year, like your mindset's going to change. Everything's going to change. You know, we all drive, we all got commutes, turn off the radio, turn on an audio book, turn on podcast, start surrounding yourself, start flooding your mind with stuff like that. So I would always, yeah, you know, uh, and then, and yeah, I would spend a little bit of time doing a little bit of, you know, gratitude, just what I'm thankful for, what, I, you know, um, affirmations, positive affirmations. Oh, I make this much. I'm confident, you know, all this stuff, because when you start off your day, and in the, in the right mindsets, when you start off your day with gratitude, and then back then I was barely making much, but hey, what am I thankful for? Because at the end of the day, what are we thankful for? We have our family, we have our limbs or our eyes. You know, there's lots of stuff that we take for granted. One of the best things I ever heard was like, hey, if I gave you a million dollars, million dollars, like, how would you feel? Great. But what if I told you that you had to wake up or that you couldn't wake up tomorrow? Would you still want? No, like your life is more than more valuable than a million dollars. Like, so it's like when we have that simple, small gratitude, no matter what else is going on in our life, like we're going to feel good. And when we're thankful, like that's, that's the best but my, mindset to be. But yeah, if you can start working on yourself, have a little bit of positive mindset, you know, it's going to start off the day. Right. So that's a lot of, I did that for years straight. And then, you know, for, and then I, then I was like, okay, well now I got these new courses and stuff I want to learn. Well, let me make the time for that. So for the, I turned into like the first, I think two hours every day. Where, hey, the first hour, hey, I'm gonna read a course. I'm gonna, you know, do my stuff on that to study this stuff, to learn this stuff, and then I'd work on some self development. So I have, you know, pictures, videos where I had my computer, I had my laptop, and then just, you know, that's how we learn new skills. It's just about making the time, you know, work on yourself before you go work for someone else. Nowadays, you know, I got, I got the baby and stuff, and I still read. I still do my, um, um, I still do my reading and with my coffee and stuff. But if I got, and if, and if I do have a new course, I go back to my old habits. Okay, let me do it first thing in the morning. Um, so I, I, that's that's how we should start the day. That's what I'm a big believer in. Especially if you want to change your life, you try to fit it on later on during the day. It's going to be harder to make it happen. So get it done first things first. I agree, dude. If I don't take care of Joel in the morning, the first two hours of the day before my kids get up, I'm a miserable person to be around because <laughs> I feel like crap, and I'm like. Oh, but I didn't get my workout. I didn't get my reading done. So I feel behind the ball already and I don't feel like I'm getting ahead. So I'm with you. I got to take care of myself first and I'm a much better person to my family, my wife, everybody. So, so key. Dude, that was amazing. Um, last but not least, just tell people where they can find you, connect with you, learn more about you and just all the things that you're up to. Yeah, man. So um, uh, best place is um, JJ, the fitness coach on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm on all social media platforms, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that stuff. It's either going to be uh, JJ, the fitness coach or JJ Velasquez. I got my podcast, the JJ Velasquez show, where I talk about exactly that, the self-development journey, the mindset, the health and fitness, just of becoming a better man, that 1% better every single day. You know, life gets better when you do.